my lesson uh, 16.2 on rate of change and slope. Well, let's get started. Uh, our essential question is, uh, how do you find the rate of change or a slope? And we're going to know first that the rate of change is a ratio, which is really just a fraction, of the amount of change in the independent variable to the amount of change in the uh, from the dependent variable to the independent variable. And what you have to remember is the independent variable is our x-axis, our x values, and the uh, dependent variable is our y-axis or our y values. So what we can do here is uh, look at our example. Eve keeps a record of the number of lawns she's uh, mowed and the money she has earned. Tell whether the rate of change, the rates of change are constant or variable. So constant will uh, be uh, if, the, if the rate of change is the same. And a variable rate of change means the rate of change will be different. So what we do is uh, going back to the uh, rate of change is a ratio of the amount of change. Well, uh, the, uh, remember that in our tables, the first row is the X values and the Y value is the uh, uh, the second row. So uh, the rate of change will be the change in Y over the change in X. And that right here is shown here, the change in money divided by the change in lawns. And the change in money is uh, uh, 45 minus 15, which is right here, 45 minus 15 divided by three uh, minus one, three minus one. So the change in Y over the change in X is uh, 30 over two or 15. And then we can go to the next day uh, from day uh, two to three. So the change in Y is 90 minus 45 and the change in X is six minus three. So that rate of change is 45 divided by three, which is still 15. And then we can compare the last rate of change, 120 minus 90 over six minus eight. 120 minus 80 over six, eight minus six. We'll take, we're taking the uh, bigger number minus the smaller number in these cases here. So we have positive values and 30 divided by two is still 15. So right here, we can see that the rate of change is 15. So she's getting paid $15 for each lawn that she mows. And that rate of change is constant. Below, we have uh, this. The table shows the approximate height of a football after it is kicked. Tell whether the rates of change are constant or variable. So what you have to know now is this table is vertical now. And the first column is the X values. And the second column are the Y values. So we have X values and Y values. And I'm still calculating the rate of change. So how much did the Y values change? They changed by 18. And how much did the X values change? They changed by 0.5. And I made a ratio of 18 divided by 0.5 which is right here, 18 divided by 0.5 is 36. So that rate of change is 36. Then I have uh, the rate of change here. This changed by 13 and this changed by one whole and 13 divided by one is 13. So right here, we can already know that the rate of change is variable. It is changing, it's changed from 36 uh, feet per second, so feet per second, and to uh, the rate of change now is 13 per second. And I could also take 31 minus 26, which is a decrease of 5, and this increased by 0.5, and I can divide uh, a decrease of 5 or negative 5 divided by 0.5 is negative 10. So the rate of change we already knew from here to here is variable. Next, calculating slope. And for some reason, they call slope M. They don't call slope S. Uh, but... Well, we can look into this here. When the rate of change of a uh, relationship is constant, any segment of its graph has the same steepness. And when it has the same steepness, that means that the rate of change is the same also. So it's a visual way of looking at the rate of change. So this steepness is the same no matter what. And uh, that's the constant rate of change is also called the slope of the line. So that steepness, rate of change, Slope, all the same thing. So the slope formula, slope is a line, a ratio of the change in Y values. And the change in Y, we often call uh, delta Y over the change in X 
delta x. So how much does the how much does the y how much do the y values change divided by how many uh, how much does the x values change? Just like what we were doing here. We were doing the change in y divided by the change in x. We got 15 throughout. Now we're doing this on a graph. And here, what I can say is uh, it's also known as the rise. So the, the change in y values is the rise, and the change in the x values is the run. So when I look here, I can see that I, I start here, and from this point to this point, I go, I rise 1, 2. I go up 2. That's the rise. And the run, so if I were to say it's slope, or m, as they like to say, the slope is 2, and the run is 1, 2, 3. The slope is 2 thirds. That's telling you the steepness of the line. And since it's going up from left to right, it is a positive. So I view slope as a, like reading a book. You read a book from left to right, and so if the line's going up from left to right, that is a positive slope. And if the line's going down from left to right, then it's a negative slope. And by the way, uh, in between positive slopes and negative slopes, you have a horizontal line, which is a zero slope. Okay, let's take a look at this in example two. Choose two points. Now, what I want to say about this is this is P sub one. That means point one. And P sub two means point number two. These are labels. They're not exponents. It's not P to the first power and P to the second power. It's just a label. Point number one and point number two. And this is uh, x coordinate number one. Y well, really, I, I would say that from point one, we have the x and y coordinates. And those sub ones match up with that P sub one. And these x sub and y sub twos match up with that P sub two. So this is the x and y coordinates of the second point. And what we could do here is if, to find the slope of the line, we have the two points. So we have one point here, and we have another point here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to zoom in a little bit more here and refocus this and show you that this is a negative slope. Remember, when we're going down, it's a negative slope from left to right, like you read a book. And uh, I would say, uh, they like to say the rise is 2, but I, I tend to look at the left dot to the right dot. And from here, I can see that I'm going down 1, 2. I stop when I reach that second dot right there. So I'm going down 1, 2. So I view my slope as uh, my rise, I should say, because the rise is the change in y's, as negative 2. And then the run, let me get that out of the way, the run is 3, because as I go down 2, I now go to the right, 1, 2, 3, and the run is 3. They're saying that the run is negative 3, but I just like to call it a positive 3. So I go down 2, so that's negative 2, and to the right 3, it's positive 3. And so I see this, I see this as down two, positive three. My slope is negative two. Oops. My slope is negative two thirds. And notice here, uh, negative two thirds with the negative in front of the fraction. The same thing as negative two thirds with the negative on the numerator. They, they're the same number. To me, I think that uh, my answer is a little bit better because this is telling you uh, go down two and then go to the right three. Uh, from point to point. Okay, we have this. Uh, the graph shows the rate at which water is leaking from a tank. Oops. And uh, the slope of the line gives a leaking rate in gallons per minute. Find the slope of the line. Well, we have two points here. One point, two points. And so I'm going to go up, and I'm going to keep going up until I'm even with that second dot. So I count one, two, three. The rise is three. I'm going up three. And from here, I go to the right. One, two, three, four. And the run is four. And the slope is the rise divided by the run. So it's three fourths. That's the slope of the line. And we could see that no matter what, if I go here, if I go up one, two, three, and I go to the right, one, two, three, four, see, that slope is telling me what, how to stay on that line in vertical and horizontal movements.
our last page. So I'm outside our school here and showing you an example of the uh, slope in action. And I see it as a staircase. And what we have here is uh, we have the, uh, the stairs and this, this is the, the, the change in Y, the change in Y over the change in X. So the rise over the run and it repeats, rise and run, rise and run. And this is a constant rate of change. And you can see that, that, that straight line that goes along with the concrete there, that is the rate of change and is broken down into these vertical components and these horizontal, rise, run, rise, run, slope. Yes. So using uh, graphs to find the rates of change. Uh, the, so this graph right here shows the distance Nathan bicycled over time. And we can see here that uh, we have these points here. We're going to be using these points. So uh, find the rate of change from one hour to two hours. So from one hour to two hours. So one hour to two hours. The rate of change is the change in Y. So the, the difference in the Y values, 30 minus 15, which is why we have 30 minus 15, over... 2 minus 1, the change in the x values, uh, change in the x, the change in y over the change in x. And that leads us to 30 minus 15 is 15, 2 minus 1 is 1, and that's 15 miles per hour. And then we could say, okay, what about 1 hour to 4 hours? Did it matter? So let's go from 1 hour to 4 hours. The change in y is 60 minus 15, which is right here. And the change in x is 4 minus 1, which is right here. And 60 minus 15 is 45. And 4 minus 1 is 3. 45 divided by 3 is 15 still. So, hey, constant rate of change. And that constant rate of change is making the straight line. Next. Uh, so let's try 2 hours to 4 hours. So from 2 hours to 4 hours, let's see what happens if we get the same rate of change. We have the change in y is 60 minus 30, so we have 60 minus 30 right there. And the change in x is 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2, and that leads us to 30 divided by 2, which is still 15. Same rate of change. Different points, any two points, you can take the first point, the fourth point, whatever it is, uh, the third point, the fourth point, doesn't matter. As long as it's a straight line, you're going to have a constant rate of change. Okay, uh, recall the graph of a proportional relationship is a line through the origin, okay? And so this, that, yeah, that looks like it's a constant rate of change because it's a straight line through the origin, okay? Uh, uh, let's see, explain whether this relationship between Nathan's time and distance is a proportional relationship. Well, yes, the graph of a line through the origin is a proportional relationship. We'll make a conjecture. So based on the information we have, does a proportional relationship have a constant rate of change? Absolutely. That constant rate of change is making the straight line. Uh, it doesn't matter what interval you use when you find the rate of change. Well, no, it didn't matter because we chose, the, uh, we chose uh, this interval right here between these two points. We chose the interval between these two points. We chose the interval between these two points and those two. It doesn't matter where you are. You will have you will get the same slope. Slope and rate of change are the same thing. So uh, that's what you have to know about slope, rate of change, uh, change in y over change in x, rise over run. Uh, lots of great vocabulary learned in this lesson. Thank you for watching.